oil paint. Um, the oil paint is unique in that it does not dry quickly. It takes a long time to dry. Um, so several days sometimes, depending on how thick you apply it. Um, so that can be nice if you are uh, blending tones and you're doing things like that where you need the paint to blend smoothly. Um, it is kind of a pain when it comes to managing it, so we need to be really careful about you know, where the paint goes, how we um, put the paint out on pallets, how we store the paintings, and all that stuff. Um, just because it, it does stay wet, and so it um, can get you know, into other places where you don't want it, onto other artwork or clothing or you know, things like that. So we want to like, really control um, how we use it. Um, I'd like everyone to work on a, a piece of newsprint just to keep the mess down. So there's um, lots of cut up pieces of newsprint over here by the cart. Um, you're going to be using the same palette paper. It's the wax paper. And the paint comes out of these tubes. Um, so instead of bottles, uh, we're using tubes now. And today we're just going to be using black and white to start with. All right, so when you squeeze out the colors, um, it's really important that you um, work the paint um, up from the bottom of the tube towards the top so that um, we get, you know, we don't waste paint. And also, uh, a lot of times people are tempted to twist the tube to get the paint out. Please don't do that. It um, causes the tubes to break. So you're going to squeeze from the bottom towards the top. And this paint's pretty thick comes out in almost like, it's almost like a paste. It's like really, really thick. All right, so this tube, this tube could use a little bit of rehab. So we're gonna push, push from the bottom here and try to get all the paint to go, whoa, that's way too much. All right, see, it also comes out fast. So uh, the good news is that paint will be good for a while. I can use that for a couple of days, but that's probably way, that's way more paint than I, than I need. Okay, um, so mixing the paint. In the past, you guys have mixed paint with paint brushes. This time, you're going to be using palette knives. So you're going to be using... One of these, it's like a, it's like a spatula. Uh, they're in this coffee can here. Um, there's all different shapes and sizes of them. You can use the palette knives also to paint with, although um, we're not gonna be doing that for this exercise. Because the paint is so thick, you wanna mix it with the palette knife. So the way I like to do this is to just take the knife and kind of swipe at it from the side and then move the amount of paint I want to mix over to a new spot. And then I do the same thing with the other paint that I'm mixing. All right, since we're working with black and white, you're just going to be making different grays today. But if you're working, when we get into working with the colors, um, then you're going to have a whole bunch of variations. Um, and you'll see how, like, how thick it is when you, get, when you get to this part of it. And to mix it together, I kind of like scoop it all up and then I stir it around until the colors blended together, and then I do it again if I need to. All right. So even on the screen, you can probably see like how thick the paint is. It really has like dimension and volume to it. And that's why the brushes don't really do a good job mixing because the paint is so thick that um, the brushes might like just kind of get stuck in it. All right. Okay. So to actually paint something. So we're gonna be working on canvas. Okay, you have to work on canvas, um, or you don't have to work on canvas, but canvas, the canvas I have, comes with that white layer on one side. Okay, that's the primer. So just like you put um, primer on a house, you put primer on uh, your painting surface. All right, I'm taping this down, which you might wanna do because the canvas I cut it off the roll so it's a little bit curved, so you might want to tape it down so that it stays flat. Okay, what to actually paint. So I'm going to leave this um, exercise open-ended. You guys can do whatever you want, but I would encourage you to maybe do something realistic, <clears throat> attempt something realistic. 
Um, I grabbed a basket of fake fruit over here. Um, and so it might be just a nice way to um, get something started is to pick uh, um, one of those pieces of fake fruit and then you can sketch that out uh, onto the square of canvas. You guys may or may not be able to see the pencil lines here, but I'm just outlining the rough shape and I'm gonna put some lines in for where I want some of my shadows to be. All right, but you can do really anything you want to. Um, again, I would, I would encourage something realistic. Don't get too crazy about it. Like, I wouldn't do like a very elaborate photograph, but a simple photograph or, um, you know, something from your imagination, something from a reference photo that, you know, has an element of realism to it. Um, because um, the way that we're going to start this exercise is with is by doing um, a range of tones, and so I'm going to use the apple to show you guys how that works. So. Next step, before I even do any painting, is I'm going to get a little bit of this thinner. So it's in a clear bottle, um, and you take one of these little uh, double metal cups, and you put a little thinner in one side. Some of them look really gross inside. Don't worry about it. It's just um, need to be. They just need to be scraped out. But um, you can just put the thinner in in one side. All right. And the other side's going to be for the linseed oil, which we're not going to get to today. That's another uh, the other liquid. We're just going to be using the thinner today. So put a little thinner in there. Don't use too much because you end up dumping. It's going to get dumped in the trash or down the drain. So just put like a tiny bit in. So now I'm going to start applying tones here. And so this is going to be a little bit similar to the um, photo project with acrylic, except you're going to see with the oil paint how easily you can blend colors together. So I'm going to start with the thinner. I'm going to dip my brush in the thinner, and I'm going to grab a little bit of this uh, gray that I made, and I'm just going to kind of stir it into the brush. And then I'm going to start painting the midtones of the apple. And I'm using a lot of thinner. And the reason why I'm using a lot of thinner is that this is the underpainting. The underpainting is like the first layer. We're going to do it in um, black and white and gray. And the other reason you use a lot of thinner on the first layer is that it helps it dry faster. The more paint thinner you add, the faster the paint will dry. All right, I'm looking for all the middle tones, not the gray tones. I'm using gray. The apple is green but I'm looking for all the middle tones that I want to capture. All right, so that's a pretty good start there. All right, then I'm gonna add some black to it, and I'm gonna darken that gray. I'm gonna add something in my eye. And so now, this is where I think that oil paint becomes really fun because when you go to mix these two tones, they blend super, super easily. And if you can see the area I'm painting right now, the gray and the black are just blending together all on their own. So even though the paint dries very slowly, um, because it does, it makes it really nice to do gradations and blending and subtle changes in tone, which is why um, people that do um, figure painting and portraits, they really like oil paint for this reason. All right, I'm working very quickly just for the sake of time, but you, know, you can obviously take your time here and go slowly. If you do need to clean a brush, soap and water will work fine, or you can swish it around in the little bit of thinner that you have in your cup. So that thinner will act also as a cleaner, and you can clean your brushes that way. So the thinner is not only a medium that you use to paint with, but it's also uh, can be a cleaner too. All right, 
right, so I'm going to do just one more part of this, and that is I'm going to do some highlights. So or I'm going to do some of the lighter part. So I'm going to add some white now, and I'm going to start to blend in some of the highlights. All right, I'm going to stop there just because, again, for the sake of time. But again, because the oil paint takes so long to dry, I can leave this for a few minutes and I can come back to it. And that color, those colors are still going to be active and wet. And so I can continue to blend and smooth. So it's really nice in that way, unlike the other paints we've used where things are going to dry and then you have to remix your colors. I can leave this stuff sitting here. I can actually leave this palette out all night and these, these colors will stay wet. This will dry overnight probably because I've used so much thinner. But between now and the end of class, I can definitely blend in more tones with it. 